Hi there, in this video, I wanna share with you six Reaper scripts that you can use as a sound designer creating sound effects to help improve your workflow, save you time, and create better sound effects. All right, if you're new here, I have a little gift for you. It's my sound designer starter pack. It's a sound pack I put together of over 900 sounds that you can use for your personal projects or commercial projects. There's everything from monster sounds, UI sounds, spell sounds, and a whole bunch of other stuff in there. So if you're interested in picking that up, I'll make sure to leave a link in the description. All right, let's get into it. All right, here we are inside of Reaper and the first script that I love to use is NVK Create. So I use this a lot to create a whole bunch of different sound effects. Not only is it like a really nice search engine and you can search up sounds and stuff that you have on your computer, but you can also use it to layer sounds together. So let's say I want some sort of uh, weapon or gun sound. I can just type that here in the search bar. Let's say I want to have, let's do something crazy like eight layers for the sound, 10 variations. We'll play for with a pitch up or down nine semitones and I want everything to be lined up at their transient point. So I'm just gonna hit enter here. And what it's gonna do now is it's just gonna automatically layer these sounds together. So it's gonna grab eight different layers from my library that I've uh, that I have set up here on my computer and it's just gonna layer these sounds together. So let's have a look and have a listen to what it's created here. All right, but hopefully you get the idea. This was like super quick and what you could do here is let's say you already have some sounds that you like here or you already have stuff you like. What I like to do here, I'll grab my search term here and I'll just paste it over to all of the tracks because now what we can do is if I want to, let's say I want to switch out one layer here. Maybe I don't want it to be a gun. Maybe this, I want it to be mechanical. So I'll say mech here. Now what I can do is I can grab all of these layers here and now I can hit the replace button. So I have a, a short code assigned to that and it's going to replace it now with mechanical sounds. Right, so it's just a really quick and easy way to like automatically replace sounds in your layer. So let's say you have other sounds. Maybe here I just want to have a kick layer. Maybe here I just want to have just a gun layer. Maybe here I just want to have some sort of like maybe designed impact or something like that. There you go. Now I can just grab all of these here and hit replace and it's going to replace them with all of their search terms here. And then I'm going to get new sound effects. So it's just a really fun and easy way to, to start layering sounds, get ideas together. Or if you already have folders set apart for different kind of layers that you're working on for your project, then you can just pick from those folders and then just uh, randomly apply different layers together and see what kind of sounds you can get. So it's just a lot of fun just to put this together. It's, it's just save you a lot of time and it's, it's just really great. All right, another script that I like from NVK Tools is their Loop Maker. So here I have an ambience, and what I wanna do is I wanna make it loop. So instead of me doing it manually and cutting it and trying to make it fade in and out super, super well, what I can just do is click the NVK Loop Maker, and it's just gonna tell me how many loops do you want, and here it is. So uh, let's say I just want uh, one loop, I can do that, and then here we go, just click it, and there you go, now I have a loop that's done. So if I solo this and make sure it's loop, and if I press play, it should loop automatically. Right, so that just saves me a ton of time right there. And now what's also cool here is you can make multiple loops from the same sound source. So if I grab this right here and I say, oh, I wanna have four different loops out of this sound source. So what it's gonna do now is I'm gonna get four different loops from that. So I'm just gonna hit go here. Bam, and now I have four different loops and it's marked inside of my, inside my time selection. And now what I can do is for each of these loops, uh, if we have a listen, they fade in perfectly into each other. The other thing that they can do is they can loop into themselves. So if I, again. So now what I can do is I can randomly assign these to be at different places. So maybe I want that one at the end here, this one over here, right? And I can just swap these out and just gotta make sure that they're perfectly connected here at the end and they're, they're snapping together. But uh, because they're all gonna be perfectly looping and they go into in and out of each other, I can make sure that I continually have this uh, seamless a loop that's always going to be different. So that is another one that they have. Another one by NVK, uh, NVK Tools is their Doppler effect, another great one. So I highly recommend checking out his stuff. Uh, he just has a lot of great scripts for Reaper, especially for sound design and workflow. So I uh, highly recommend his stuff. All right, let's go to the next Reaper script that I like to use, and it's called LKC Render Blocks. So what it can do is basically you can grab, let's say, my uh, weapon sound here that I created with MVK Create. I can grab that here. And with Render Blocks, you can hit a preset here that I have, and basically it blocks everything together like this. And this is the way I, I like to use it. Now, there's a lot more options uh, and things you can do with it, everything from like renaming and, and render, rendering it out really quickly. But personally, this is how I like to use it because now I can just grab... Uh, a hold of this like this and everything's going to move together, right? So all of these are now connected. I don't have to worry about these. Same thing if I want to do this here or like this. And now everything's just connected together and I can move it around like that. Another one that I like to use by uh, LKC Tools is LKC Variator. And this one is awesome because what it can do here, as you can see, I've loaded it up in here and it can uh, randomly change parameters for all of these 
uh, effects here are all of these parameters. So volume, pan, pitch, time stretch, rate, position, content, length, fades, shape, uh, fade shape, and file. So, uh, I mean, volume, pan, pitch, tape stretch, these are all kind of obvious. Uh, position, this is your position within like uh, your time selection here. So if I just select this one and I just do a position change, so it's going to change where it is within that, that time selection. As you can see, it's moving around. Right, uh, content uh, and file. I'm not sure what the difference is between the two, uh, but one of them, I think, so file replaces the actual sound file in that folder, if I'm not mistaken. So if I hit like mutate here, it should replace this sound file with a different one. And as you can see, I think it's, it did that here. Yeah, so it's moving and it's changing out the, the sound effect here, right? You can see here the name changing. That's because it's switching out the sound effect every time I do it. If we look at content here, yeah, so if you place content, it's just like if you were going to press Alt and drag, it's just moving like what part of the sound file it's going to play. So if you have like a really long sound file or something, something like that, it's going to change the content that way. Right, length is pretty self-explanatory. Same thing with fades and fade shape. And yeah, so then what's cool is that you can save and, and load different presets here. So I have some different presets that I that I like to have for based on my workflow. And yeah, so it's great for creating variations, especially for different sound effects. I can just grab all of these here, uh, load my... my uh, number one here, uh, press enter, and now I have a different variation set. So it's really easy to just grab this, drag a copy of it elsewhere, and then and then hit uh, the LKC variator and then create a new variation with it. All right, the next Reaper script that I, I, I really like and I've recently been using it quite a lot, and that is the global sampler. All right, so the global sampler is basically this sampler up here that I have, and I put it on my master chain. So if you look here on my master bus here, I have it up here, global sampler. And that's it. It just sits there. And basically, whatever's going through the master is going to be going through this um, this channel up here that we see. And what it does, if I can show you really quickly, is it records whatever audio plays through that uh, global sampler. So let's say I'm playing on my MIDI keyboard here through Faceplant. Right? It shows and it plays here. Now, what I can do here is I can uh, stop the sampler here. If I press Control click I can now listen back by pressing Alt-Click. I can restart it again, Control-Click. What what is the the way that I use it and I love it is I can just sell, make a selection here and I, I can just grab it. So make a selection, grab and drag it into my project here, and now I have the sound file here. So if ever I'm designing something, or especially when I'm inside of like a synth and I get this cool sound, or if I'm randomizing certain parameters and it's hard to go back to certain things, especially in something like S Layer or using other plugins where I can randomize stuff, but it, you can't really go back once you do a randomization then this is great because I can just grab whatever it is. Or if I had a performance that I really liked that I just, I, I, I can't go back to, I can just grab it here, drag it into my session. And there it is. Like I have the audio right here, uh, ready to go. And I can do whatever, add other effects or if I can just export it out that way. So um, yeah, global sampler, really great script. All right, let's move on to number four here. And the fourth script is called the UCS renaming tool. So if you are ever creating some sort of sound library like I often do, or if you're just working on a project or you just want to organize your own sound effects in your own personal library, the UCS renaming tool is an easy to use tool that helps you assign the UCS naming format to all of your sound effects. So let me show you how it works. So here I have a bunch of sounds uh, that I record at home. These are just like shovel, metal shovel sounds. All right, they're just like these clicks and stuff. So I'm gonna grab these and I'm just gonna uh, put a region around them. All right, so now that I have all my sounds selected and ready to go, I'm just gonna uh, open up the UCS renaming tool script. And I just have it as a preset here on, on my stream deck. And I'm just gonna, it's gonna open up this uh, window on your browser. And now this is the UCS renaming tool. And so once you have it set up, this is how it opens. And what's great about it is you don't have to like try to find out which category your sound goes into. You can do a search for it. So let's say I have these uh, metal clicks. I'm, so I'm just going to click metal here and see if there's one here that makes sense for my metal sound here. All right. I didn't look through everything, but just for the sake of time, I'm going to go with metal miscellaneous here because I don't see one that's very particular. So now what I can do is I can just click on it and now it's going to assign those categories to my sound here. Now I can just click the file name and this was a uh, portable metal shovel. I can do my creator ID. So that's usually just your name. And what's also great is that here they give you examples of how you can write your name for your creator ID. Sound source or show ID, this is optional. So I usually leave this blank. Uh, user notes again here, optional, I leave that blank. Now here is, how do you want to apply that inside of Reaper? How do you want to process the name? So I did it by region. If you want to do by markers or by track or by media items, you can do that here. I like to do by regions. That's why I created the regions before opening up this tool. And then here, selected regions in the region manager. 
or you can select the time selection or full project. So I normally do the selected regions in the region manager. The reason for that is sometimes I'll usually have like multiple different like effects. Like maybe I'll have like each of these here all have different um, time region selections. Now what I can do is inside of whenever I export a project here, I will open up my region manager. And I already know that for me, it's all these number fours up here that I want to rename. So I'm, I'm just going to select these. Now I can go back to my renaming tool. I can hit submit. And now when I go back into my project here, you'll see that all the regions here have been renamed using the UCS renaming, uh, UCS naming format here. So now they're all set and ready to go. So now when I go and export, all I have to do is select the region. This is going to select the region name for my sound. I can just select the folder that I wanted to have it in, select export, and they're ready to go. So now they're all going to be uh, renamed. So if you ever need to rename sound effects really quickly using the UCS renaming tool. You don't want to do it manually. You want a quick way to do that. This is a quick way that I found to do it. And I, I've been uh, really liking it. And it's been saving me a lot of time. So UCS renaming tool. All right, let's go to script number five here, which is the MIDI multi tool. So this is a tool that you can use to change and edit MIDI. So inside of Reaper, there's not a lot of options that you can do in terms of like MIDI editing, at least compared to some other DAWs. Uh, so this tool has been super helpful, especially if you're doing like musical stuff. But even if you're not, if you're doing uh, sound design uh, with with a synth like Faceplant, which is what I have open here, I don't have an actual sound here, but let's say I had a patch here. Okay, let's say, and, and you wanted to trigger stuff with MIDI. Well, what you can do here is I can load the, I, I have to sell, make a selection. So let's say I want to select these. I can load now the um, MIDI editing tool, and then it'll give you a ton of options for things you can do. So I'm just going to select these down here. And there you go. So if I just wanted to, let's say, change the velocity here, there's a lot of stuff I can do. Like I can change um, the sl slope here like that. I can compress the sound too. So let's say I want to go down here. I'm just compressing it. If I want to compress everything to go down together, everything's going down. If I want to uh, do the opposite where I'm expanding, everything's going up, I can do that, right? So you just have a ton of, of options of how you can edit the MIDI, which you just don't have. I can even stretch it this way or the other way, which is already at the end. Uh, but yeah, it's just a ton of options that you just don't have without the, the MIDI multi-tool, right? So even, even up here, again, same thing. So grab this here. I can, again, drag it in if I want everything to be squeezed a little bit more. So let's say, you know, you were putting in uh, certain MIDI notes and everything was um, like wasn't long or, or was too long or at the wrong time selection. It's just really easy to grab this and make everything super short. And now it's at the right time selection, right? And so now everything's at whatever this is, 132nd instead of uh, every quarter note, which I could do if I wanted to like this, right? So it's just super quick and easy to edit MIDI using the MIDI uh, multi-tool. All right, let's go to script number six, which is our stem manager. Stem Manager looks like this. And what it does is it creates stems. So as you can see here, I have all of my tracks inside of my project here. I have them in here. So they're all exactly the same. And if I want to create stems, I can just add a stem. And let's say I want to add, you know, stem one. Okay. So now what I can do is I can select which track do I want to be part of this stem. So let's say I want to have, uh, I just want to have these layers here, these three layers. Okay. And now for the next one, let's say stem two, I can, maybe I want to have these uh, three layers like this. So some are going to be the same. Some are not going to be the same. Now, what this does is now what I can do is I can export these two stems and it's only going to export the tracks that I have soloed here, right? So this is really good and mostly useful for uh, musical purposes when you're exporting out stems for music. Uh, what it's also good for though, is if you have dynamic processing on a group bus and you need to export things, uh, together to, uh, with, with the effects on to the individual layers, this Use, uh, this stem manager makes it uh, th this process just a lot quicker. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the details of how I use it and how you can use it to do that. I have a separate video, so I'll link it in the cards above if you want to see it. But that's basically how I use it. I use it to export sounds that are being triggered dynamically by the group bus, so with all the effects on that bus. So that's how I use this to be able to do that. So so yeah, it's really quick and easy, and uh, it, it'll just export stem, stem after stem without waiting. So you don't have to export number one and then stop and then go back in, export number two, stop. It'll just do one after the other after the other. So if, like, if you have a bunch of stems or a bunch of sounds that you would need to export that have similar sounds in those stems, then it's just a really quick workflow for that. All right, like I said, I was going to show you a few bonuses here. And the first one I'm going to show you here is um, Grimsync of, uh, by LKC. Uh, tools. And this is uh, to uh, con connect uh, Reaper and Wise together. Uh, so if you are working in Wise, this is a great little script that can help you to, and, and just improve your workflow for that. There's also another one by Audio Kinetic. 
And theirs here is called RiaWise. Again, you can download it and basically it helps you connect directly from Reaper into your Wise project. So if you're working in Wise for your for your video game, it's just a, a, a really quick script that you can connect the two together. It just makes your workflow a lot more seamless. So I don't personally use them uh, at the moment. I've never actually used them, but I know other people have and do and it's just, it, it makes your workflow basically a lot uh, quicker and easier. All right, so I hope you found that valuable. So for each of these scripts, I'm gonna make sure to leave a link in the description below so you can grab whichever one interests you. I highly suggest all of them and recommend all of them, especially if you're doing sound effects. But whatever, whichever one you wanna grab, uh, I'll put it in the description below. And if you like this video, I think there's another video, video you're gonna like, which is a video I made about Reaper and how you can do a really quick workflow for creating sound effects and variations. So I'll make sure to put that in the cards above if you're interested in seeing that. All right, that's it for now. If there's any scripts that I missed or other scripts that you use uh, for creating sound effects, please leave it down in the comments below. I'd love to learn from you and see what you guys use. And thanks so much for watching all the way through to the end. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.